Hi again, welcome to another video. And on the bench today, I have a steel MS170 chainsaw. Um, I've had this a few weeks. I got it with a job lot. It's a 2004 model. Uh, it's a bit grubby, as chainsaws usually are. And the first job I'm going to do on it is take the exhaust off. Well, actually, before that, I'm going to take the bar and chain off just so it's easier to move around on the bench. Then I'm going to take the exhaust off and have a look and to see what the piston's like. So what I'm going to do off camera, I'll just undo them two and take the bar and chain off. And I'll be back with you when I'm taking the exhaust off. So now I've got the bar off. Everything sort of looks OK in there. It's a bit grubby, but that's turning OK. Check the. Yep off yep that's all good so now i'm going to take the exhaust off and have a look in there see what the piston looks like let's have a look yeah that isn't good that piston you can probably see it okay from there the rings are right stuck in there. So yeah, they've sort of melted in. And that will be why this saw was in the job lot. So what do I do with it? I've just looked online and I can actually buy an aftermarket pot and piston for 21 pounds delivered. I think it's just worth repairing because that's gonna be 21 pound the pot and piston. Uh, I may need a carved diaphragm and gasket. I may not, but I'll put that on the list at the moment. I do like to put a new one in when I uh, fix a two stroke. And the other thing will be a new chain. The bar will probably go again, but I think the chains for these are only 12 inch, small little chain. I think they're about seven, eight pounds. I'm going to get that part ordered and I think it's going to be worth putting one on. So I've got to wait a few days for it to arrive, but you'll see it right now. It's a few days on now, and I now have a new pot and piston. I haven't unwrapped it yet, but all the bits are in there. And it looks exactly the same as that. It says it fits this saw. I'm sure it will. Um, I actually looked and I could have bought the complete engine for about 15 pounds more, which would add the crank and the bottom crank cover on and everything but I thought I will leave it as much still as I can so it will have the steel crank in and the steel well the original steel um bottom crank casing so what I've got to do now is just strip the whole saw down so we'll get on with that now so firstly I think I'm going to get the carburetor out of the way so just remember how we do this I'm going to pop that out like that pull it out of there and I need to get that out. It's always a bit tricky. But not too hard, just don't want to break anything. There we go. It's out of the way. And I can get that out now. So that's out of the way. Uh, Carburetor is connected through there. But I just pinged it off, put in the throttle. Get the nuts back off. And apart from a fuel line, I think it will come out. So I'll just ease that off. There we go. Is that everything? I believe it is. There isn't a lot of room to get it out, but it should just come out. Yep. I may not clean that. I may just, well, just clean the outside. I may not take it apart. I might just give it a go when I put it back together because it looks pretty clean. It doesn't look like it's had much um debris or anything go inside so i might just see how that goes if it does prove to be a problem it's not a great um issue getting it back off again so i'll just put that to the side there's gonna be quite a lot of cleaning to do in certain parts i'll clean all that off and everything but firstly i want to get that engine separated from the rest so i'm gonna be making a bit of noise now for the impact so i'll just let you watch along
So as you've just seen, I've been taking these bungs out and some other bits and pieces off. Uh, but where I've got to now, actually the chain brake's gone back on. Where I've got to now, I need to take all this sort of handle part off because I can't seem to get that out. And I had a leakage because I forgot to put the caps back on. Um, it's a while since I took one of these apart, so I'm just trying to um, remember how it goes. But I'll just plod along and I'll um, get that handle off. What I'll do, I'll do that off camera and I'll be back with you to show you how that comes off because once that's off, I'm to the, just the sort of cradle that holds the engine then. So much smaller amount to work with when the handle's out of the way. I had actually undone everything. It was just, it was holding on them rubbers. And then when it goes back together, them little bungs go in and it sort of makes the rubber sort of grommet bit tight then but now the handle is separate so i'll put that out of the way so we're for this stage now so i should be able to get this off now that one as well put this out. now the recall should come off quite easy like so so now the recall's off um, you see the flywheel there, the coil there, the oil tank, the fuel tank. All of them are going to have to come out or off. And then we can get to where the engine is. So we're getting down to sort of the area now we need to get to. Uh, what am I going to do first? Well, I'm just going to work out where the wires go for the coil. There's not a lot. I'll take that one off. That one is connected by a... A little bolt so I'll get that out and that one as well so I'll get a coil out the way there we go still a bit connected let's get that might actually be able to leave that there at the moment so we'll just see uh, there is a little sort of space of piece there so don't forget that when you put it back on up to the side hopefully i don't forget it but um i'll know if i have <laughs> um so uh what we're going to do now i need to really take the flywheel off so what i'm going to do is just put a bit of pull cord down the plug hole stop the engine turning and then I'll undo that. I think I've got enough in there, so let's have a go. Wrong way. That wasn't right. Hmm, not sure how that goes. Um, which way does that go? Let's try the other way. It might be a left hand thread. No, it was, it was normal thread, I think. Yeah, to undo. So yeah, that was, it must've just been tight. That is only a small impact. It hasn't got much uh, oomph behind it really, but it, it's perfect for the little bolts. But we'll put that back on slightly. And I'll see if I can just pop that off. Get a small hammer. And all I'm gonna do is just hold it in the air a little bit like that and then just I loosened it no not yet It'll take a bit more than that usually it doesn't take much might be there now gone still don't know whether it has Ah, it's gone now. So we'll get that out of the way. And now we can see the bottom of the engine there. I've located where the four bolts are that holds the engine to the casing. One there, one up in there, 
one down there and one there. Uh, this side is fully stripped down, so that'll be ready to come off as soon as I've undone them four. But on the other side, we have to take the clutch off. So I just check that the lock isn't on, which it, it was. Then if I ping that clip off, don't want it to ping. Well, I wanted to ping, but not go across the shed. Then we have just like a washer there. So we'll just put that to the side. Then we've got the clutch cup bearing. I'm just gonna have to stack them in order how they come off. Now I need to get the clutch off there. And I think it's left hand thread on this, I think. I can't remember, so we'll, we'll go that way. It was. So that's off. So I can move that out of the way now. Where are we? Yep, we've got that off. Remember underneath, we have that washer. And it goes that way. And we've got that piece under there to do with the oiler. And now we're down to the, sort of crank that side now. So I'm thinking probably I can just undo them bolts underneath now and it should just sort of pull out a bit and drop back. So my impact end did actually go in all of them. So that was good. Save some manual wrenching. Uh, we are a little bit stuck on there, but I think that comes away as I pull it away. It's a bit tight in there though. Just checking I haven't missed anything. But it is all loose there now. Didn't particularly want to take this apart any more than I have to. I know what it is. It's there, that grommet through there. I've got to sort of ease that through. I want to be careful, I don't want to split nothing. Ah, there's a little like ring piece come off there. And that was probably a lot of the issue why it wasn't pulling through, unless I can. Get it off that side. Which I can, I think. There's not a lot of room to manoeuvre in there. Oh yeah, we're winning. We nearly got it off. Let's check you're in shot. There we go. So I didn't have to take that little ring off in the end, but that's no problem to put that back on. And we are down to where we need to be. I'll just turn that and take the um, pull cord out of there. Unless I can pull it out. Yep, I'll pull it out. So that's the uh, engine separated now from the rest of the saw. So we'll have a look in there now. I can see him better in there now. <sighs> you can see that's well scored. And that side isn't great either. So let's just take the bottom off and then we'll take that apart and have a real proper look at it. So now then four are undone, uh, I will have to give it a little lever because it's stuck with the sealant there. Which when I put it back together, I need to use the sealant again. I have some in the drawer. So let's just see if we can get a screwdriver in there just to give that, ah, yeah, it's a match. I plan to use the seals again. I haven't got new seals, so I plan to use them. So now we should be able to, does that locate in only one way? believe it does <laughs> no it goes in both ways and i can't remember which way it has to be it's not a good huge problem because i can um check on the video <laughs> well, yeah i should have took note of that <laughs> but we can get back to that soon so now i'm going to lift that out 
There we go. And I'll make a note, the side where the coil fits on is the side where the flywheel fits on. When it goes back together, I don't want to get the crank the wrong way around. I'm not sure whether I can, but at least if I take note, I know it will go back in that way. So we'll pull that out. And that piston is awful. Look at the rings. They're out a little bit there, but that was in a right old mess. I think that was a classic case of not using two-stroke oil in with the petrol. Look at it there. So I'm going to be reusing that crank. I'm going to be reusing the base. So they've got to be cleaned up. This part now is rubbish. I've still got their pull cord stuck in there. That is in a right old mess as well. So yeah, that's all what I got new. I got that new and the piston and the clips and everything. So what I'm going to do now is give the whole saw a good clean up. And then you'll see me next when I've got the new pot and I'm putting the crank in, piston on, and putting it all back together and sealing it back together. And then we can get this all back together. But in between time, I've got a lot of cleaning to do. So like I always say, for me, it'll probably be an hour or two uh, between filming again. But for you, it'll be right now. So I have cleaned up some of the casing. There's still some bits to clean up, but I've cleaned up enough of it. So when I have the engine put back together, I can bolt that back to the cradle. But what I want to do now is get this old piston off. I have actually got the new piston there and I have put a clip in one side. It's a bit tricky to get in. So I've done one side off camera. I'll do the other side on camera and you'll see that. But first I need to get this old one off. I have cleaned it up and located where the arrow is. I could work that anyway because that will go to the exhaust side. But it's just easier when I'm swapping them over to make sure I get it right because I could easily get it back to front. So I should only have to... Well, I will only have to take out one clip on this. And I've got new clips, so if it does ping across the shed, it's no big deal. But I've got a pick here, and hopefully that will... And it did fly across the shed. But like I said, it doesn't matter. I think I can see it anyway. Uh, but if I needed it, I wouldn't have been able to see it, would I? <laughs> That's how it goes. But anyway, let's push that pin out, if I can get it out. I have to tap it a bit, but we'll see. But if it just pushes out, I might have to tap that. Do get a new pin in it as well, though. So I'll try and do it like that. Shouldn't shouldn't really take much. Have we got it through? Uh, yep, yeah, we have. There it is. So what I'm going to try to do is get the little pliers on that and then I'll swap it straight over with a new one so I know I have it, the arrow, going the right way. So let's have it that way around. That arrow is there. Shouldn't need to pull it out fully. So they'll come off now. I'll just put that that way so I know which way the arrow goes. Um, it has got a little bearing in there. I haven't replaced that. I'm not going to replace that. It didn't come in the kit and I'm happy to go with it again. So now I have the new piston there. All I've got to do is just put that on there, push the new pin through, all the way through. Like I said, I've already got the other clip in the other side. So it just means I have to do the clip this side, which was a little bit tricky, but shouldn't be too bad. Better if I could balance that up on something, but I'll just see if I can do it like this. Just usually push the end in a little bit and then just guide the rest in with the screwdriver. Should be able to do it like this. And then I've got to put the rings on. Got it in to a degree. I think I've got it in fully. Yeah, so that went pretty easy. See that clip in there? It's fully in. This one on the new piston set has got that little tab on, which is much better than just, uh, um, well, they do them, so it hasn't got that little tab on the end like it was. Actually, I can show you the one that's in there still. There, you can see there's no tab on that. So it just goes around the outside. They're much more difficult to get in. The ones with the tabs on 
are easier because you've got something to sort of push on. But that's all in place now, so it's a matter of putting the rings on next. We'll 100% check that's in, but it is. So now I've got the two rings here. Well, there's one of them. I'll put that on first. And these have got the little locators in. It's the little locator there. So this is the bottom ring. So it goes like that. It has to be that way. So that, that goes over the little pin I'll show you. It's built in the piston. So let's it's always a harder one to do because you've got to go past you've got to go past the top ring gap to get to the bottom. So what I'm just gonna do is get it on just before it goes past the first one there. I want to try and bypass that and get to the bottom one. So it'll be one sort of swift movement really to try and get that below there so let's see how we go I bet it'll get stuck in there be better if i could rest it better but let's have a go i've got that part passed but the top part's gone and got stuck in it a little bit and it's gone in the top ring gap if you see there so it's just a matter of sort of getting it out of there and getting it into the bottom one. Could always put it on from the bottom of the piston before you put the piston on. That is an option, but now I've gone this far. I've got to get it past there. We are in. Well, very, very nearly in. We will be in as soon as I do that. So you can see when that ring closes up, it does that, if you see. There, like that. So now I'm going to get the top one on, which is easier because I haven't got to go past the ring gap. I can see the little piece just there. So it's exactly the same process. It's just like I said, just a bit easier. So I say, yeah, we're, we're on. Push that down and it's found its place there. So they're both on. So that's already the crank and the piston to go back in the new, the new pot. So what I'm gonna do is smear a little bit of two stroke oil in there, just to sort of lube it up before I get started. I've cleaned off the, the base the crank base. I've just got to double check where that piece goes. So it's on the right way around. And I'm going to seal it together with this stuff. It's good stuff this is. Uh, it actually says I, I can put it on three different ways. You can immediately push it together and seal it. You can let it have a skin on it. And there was something else as well, I can't remember. I should probably just put it on and let it set for a few moments and then push it together. And I will just put some in there as well because I'm using the original seals, it will just sort of seal it all around the outside. So that's what I'll do. So on this top part, I'll just put a bit around there, a bit around there, and then I'll put the rest on the bottom part around there. You can see there's a little groove. Don't need too much. And then I shall put it in there because that's where the seal sits. That's where the bearing sits. So we'll get onto that next. Let me just check there in line still which they are. So I think it's sort of, let me try to explain this. I think this one, now I'm looking at it, you can see it's got a bit of an area there before it starts to get to where the main bore is. And that's to help the rings pass. So it should slip in there pretty easy. We will know in a second. Let me just double check everything's right. gradually ease it in i have got past there now i've got in that far so the first ring has gone past i may just have to slightly just push that other ring in a little bit yeah i had to do that just to get past there because it wasn't clearing enough it would have broke the ring if i'd have forced it 
and now we are in the bowl in there now i'm going to just leave it there like i said i'm going to put some sealant around there so i've got plenty of room to do that and then i can push it into place so that'll be my next job so now i'm going to get some of this durco on and get this engine sealed together i always get in a mess with this sort of job so let's see if i can keep it a bit tidier today but yeah i usually get in a mess I will just speed you through rather than you watch me do this, which will take me a little while. So surprisingly, I didn't get in too much of a mess today. So I'm just going to leave it a few minutes now. But I am going to push that one in though. I'm just going to get that in place. So let's just get it around that way. And then we'll just feed that in so everything goes into place. If it will. There we go. Get in there. It has gone in, but not in fully. So I'm hoping this is right. I think that side has. Yeah, I think it has now. Um, I've got a little bit of that either on that bearing not that it would matter that much but we might as well wipe it off while we're here now i'm just going to wait a couple of minutes and then get the base on then i can clamp it all together and it should be okay but i'll just show you that there i have found out which way the base goes on a little tab bit on the side I'm not sure what it's for but what i'm holding it by uh, goes out the clutch side so that side. I'm ready to put this on now. I'll just grab it and try and get it all over my hands. And actually I'm gonna move the crank just in a little bit. Well, they've made any difference, but. I'll get that fitted on there. Hopefully everything goes well. There we go. I went lovely into place then. So I'm just going to get these screwed up. Um, if I'd have been just replacing the piston and I was using the old pot, I may have put Loctite on these, but as it's going to be screwing into new metal, I'm not going to bother. So I'll just get these screwed up. They actually do cut their own threads as you screw them in anyway. To a degree. I think they were threaded, but I can feel it's tight, so. I've got them all tightened up now, and you can see all the sealant has oozed out. That's what I want to see. Goes to show that I covered all the areas okay. And it's going to do its job, I think. So, um, yeah, next job will be getting this back onto the cradle. But I will just get the flywheel and just show you that engine turning before I put it back on. So I've put the flywheel on, just temporary at the moment, and I'll show you it turning over. Really nice and smooth. And that's the other side. So, yeah, I think that's going to be a good success when i get this back on so i'm just gonna let that dry off tonight and then i'm gonna just get it fitted up tomorrow so 
yeah, we're making good progress. That sound really nice. Nice and smooth. I was a little bit worried because you get aftermarket parts and sometimes they are slightly different. So, uh, for example, that might not have fitted on 100%. The crank might not have fitted in 100%, but it all seems really, really good. Um, this is a Wartec um, pot and piston. And I found Wartec stuff is okay. It's cheap, but it always seems to be quite good for an aftermarket sort of copy part. So, yeah, I think that's going to be good. It's the next day now and the sealant is all dry so i can get this engine back into the cradle but what i think i'm going to do this time i think i'm going to take that rubber pipe out that goes to the carburetor if that would come out quite easy which it did and i'm going to put that on there first i think it's going to be better that way and easier so that pushes on there quite nicely all looks in good condition so now when i put this into place i'm hoping it's going to sort of fall into place and I can just push that sort of softer bit there really of the rubber pipe through that hole. Might be a tad tricky. Not really quite sure what's stopping it at the moment, but we are getting there. Yeah, you can see we're getting through there now. I might have to use a screwdriver on it, but I didn't really want to have to, but if I can just ease it in with that and get it through. I'm not actually using a pointy bit on the screwdriver, I'm just sort of easing it with the side of the screwdriver. We are sort of getting into place now, but it's not fully through, as you can see. I don't want to risk damage in it. Someone's come through. I'm just gonna get some little pliers and just give it a little tug, but it's not gonna be much. Just to see if I can ease it through. I'm not gonna overdo it because I don't wanna rip it. But it is coming through now. We're nearly there. It's only around that side now where I've got to get through. I am using the point a bit, but I was quite careful. And we are through now. So a little ring I did take off there. In the end, it did have to come off. Uh, so I'll put that back in soon. But that looks pretty good to me. It's all connected nicely on there. The engine is all in place. So I can get them for engine bolts in now. Now the engine's all bolted in place, I'm gonna get the flywheel back on. But before I do that, I've got a oil tank and I've got a fuel tank to go in. Oil tank goes in there. And that pipe there goes through a little sort of area underneath. If it will go in there, yep. It goes there. And then that just pushes into the hole. It will just push that in there and it will, I think it sort of fits under that bit of plastic just to keep it in place. I'll just nudge that with a screwdriver to get it totally in place. Just so it goes behind the plastic just so it doesn't slip out. But I'm happy that's in place there. You can see there. Could actually turn that slightly though. Yeah, I think that's all good. So the oil one's back in. The fuel one, uh, I think is a little bit easier if I get it in the right way. Which way does it go? Like that. And it actually does push in there and behind there. So it fits in there. So it's nice and easy. So now I can get the flywheel back on. And then I can get the coil back on then. So we have got a little key built in there. So I've just got to locate that where it's got to be located, which is there. And then I'll tighten it up.
So now we'll get the coil on. Remember the plastic spacer, which will go on there. And then the coil goes on like that. Just make sure we've got it all lined up. I'll get that started. Remember the top one had the wire go to it. So I'll do the bottom one first and get that in. And now the top one. And then I can plug that one on there. I'll just get this started a bit and then I'll plug the other one on the coil. Just so that wire's out of the way. What way around that goes. Better like that, I think. So I'll just tighten that up. I've purposely left it a little bit loose. I'll put this card in there. So I've got my gap and it's holding on to the magnet now, nice and tight. So I can tighten them two up fully. So the coil's nice and tight now. I'll just pull that bit of card out and that is all good. So off camera, I just put the HT lead in that little sort of clamp clip, if you like. That one will go down in there and it'll lock in there. Um, and there's locating bits there to put the two wires in. Just keep them out of harm's way. So I'll just didn't actually see where they come out when I took it apart, but I assume it's just one in each slot. Just nudge it carefully with a screwdriver. Yep, I think that's all good. So they're in place. So we're getting this back together pretty quick. I think I might just do the exhaust next. Just I've located the two exhaust studs. All they do is just push in behind a square bit, sort of locates behind, and then you just slip the exhaust on. Ease it on, yep. They've come out there. Got that as well to put on. So you put that on there. And then we have the two little nuts to go on. So I'll do them up. Now the exhaust is back on. I'm going to put the Recall back on. I've took off the caps so it fits over and it has to fit under there like so and then that goes on there like that. So I'll put the caps back on now. And then I'll just wind the uh, four bolts in. So one there, one there, one in there and there's a little one that just goes there. Now the recall's back on, I'm going to work on the clutch side. So I've got this to put in first. This is to do with the chain oiler. If you look in there, let me just get a screwdriver. There's a little cog there. Just see, I'm turning it there. This here locates into that and that gets turned by the clutch cup in there. That turns it and that gives you chain oil. So make sure that slips in properly. Um, I think that is in place okay. Just double check. Yep, that's all good. Disc piece to put in now, like a large washer if you like. So that goes in like so. Then the clutch itself goes on. So it goes up like that and tightens up. I have just got to put some pull rope down the plug hole just to tighten that up. I'll actually do that off camera. It's only a matter of just tightening it this way. It's, um, as we found out when we took it off, it is um, left hand thread. So it has to be tightened yeah, this way now. 
to get it tight. The clutch is all tight now. Um, not much to go on this now, really. I'm just gonna oil the roller bearing. I'm not gonna put grease or anything on. I'm just gonna just dip in a bit of oil, just so it's oiled up. That can go on. Now we've got to put the clutch cup back on. I have to locate that piece in that oiler. So I'm just gonna look down there and I can see where it is. It's right there. Double check. Yep, all looks good there. So I have that washer piece to go on, and then that clip goes back on. So I'll just get that back on. Check it's on properly. Yep, that's on all good. So we have that back on. Now the clutch is all back on. I've got to get this handle back on. Um, I'm not really going to be able to show you that very easy because I've got to sort of wrestle it over that there. That goes in there. That one goes in there. And there's one at the bottom as well. It goes in down there. And then I just cap them off with these. So I'm going to do that off camera. It's just a matter of pushing them through, but it is a lot of moving about. So it's going to be hard for me to film that. So I'll do that off camera. Then I'll be back with you when that's on. All them are in place now. So I'll just get these pushed back in. That holds it nice and tight then. And there, one there, one right at the bottom there. So that's the handle back on. So now the control and everything is there, for the throttle. So I can get the carburetor back on and that little plastic piece there, the sort of control bit. Um, so yeah, we'll get onto that now. So now let's get the car back on. I have pushed that little piece back in there in that rubber, what I said I had to take out. So that's pushed back in already. So I'll slip the carb on, but as I'm putting that on, I'm just gonna try and connect the throttle as I'm doing it. If you just push the throttle down, you can just hook it in. Quite hard to show that, but I'll try and show you. If you look there, it's in place now, but if you hold it up, it will come out. So if you just hold it up like that, it's got like a little hook bit and it hooks in, quite simple. So now that's in place, we've got this piece here. Uh, that is to do with the stop. So that has to slip into this, but I might be able to do that afterwards because I want to get this piece in. So this piece hooks in there like that. Just try, just try and show you. There's a hole right there. Not that bit there. That's where the stop bit locates and it's the hole at the bottom. And the end of that goes in that hole. So the end of that piece goes in that hole I showed you. So it's all a little bit tricky, but if you just take your time, it'll be okay. So that goes in there, so that's in place. Then that end goes in the hole at the opposite end. There, like so. And then that piece there, the metal piece, right there where my finger's lifting up. You want to try and lift it up as you click this piece in, because that has to sit on top. Like that. That's right. If I move that down now, I can put that in place. And that wire goes in there like that. Yeah, and that pulls along. And that wire locates in there. Let me just push it along a little bit further. That's about as far as it goes. Then that wire just rests in there. So now that's working. That is all the control settings. And when I put it up to there, that metal piece I just showed you touches on that brassy color piece. So that will stop the saw. So that's all in place and all looks good to me. And also the choke is working as well. Off camera, I also put that piece in. It just sort of clips into place. And I put the spark plug in. Uh, I put a little bit of two-stroke down the bore, not much, just a dribble, just so it lubes it up, just to give it a good start, and put the plug cap on. 
um, and that's all good and I did test for Spark as well um, I tested for that at the beginning anyway of the video I'm not sure if I showed that or not but it had good Spark so that's all good so now we've got to get this back on the air filter housing there's no gaskets on this saw at all there's no gaskets to come off with it so um just put it back on like that and now i've just got to get the two nuts and tighten them up they just go you can see there and there i'll do them off camera and then we can just put this piece in actually i can do that now just a little piece that fits into there and i've cleaned up the air filter all that's left to do on top of the saw now is to put this cover on i've given it a clean up so that can go back on so if i get it in them two hooks i have got the controller there so i've just got a sort of Put it past there, that's okay. And then that should push into place and I should be able to lock it. And yeah, that's locked now. So the cover's back on. Now let's get the chain on. I've already put the chain on the bar and I have actually got the adjuster in the right position as well. So there, just adjust there. One way to go that way, and one way to go the other way, which I will have to go the other way to tighten it up. But to get it on initially, I've had to back it off a bit. So I can get that on now and it should be fine. Let's just do that like so, just get it onto them cogs. Get it back in the channel, the bar. Yep, and we're there. So I'm just gonna put that on now. I'm not gonna go fully tight with it um, because I've got to still adjust it up. Uh, yep, we're there. The two nuts on. Just use this tool just to lift them up a little bit. So I just got to adjust it on that screw there really loose at the moment not too bad I've adjusted that up and I'm quite happy with it but as soon as this cuts some wood it will loosen up quite quick new chains always do that then it'll need readjusting so um yeah I'll give it a test out uh, on some wood so before I sell it it will be adjusted for the sort of second time when it's running a little bit so I'm just going to tighten them up now we'll put some chain oil in We'll put some petrol in and then we'll see if it starts up and if it does and runs well yeah that's job done so i'm going to go start up on this saw now so i'll just choke it there and then i'll pull it and see if it'll go the chain brake is on as well i always put that on when i start them up i thought it'd take a few pulls to fire because the fuel had all run out of the carb but now we'll go to there. So as you just saw, it starts, runs and revs really well. I didn't need to touch the carburetor, that was fine. So it saved me a job. The only real issue it had was that pot and piston damage, um, most likely caused because someone had put 
neat fueling and either forgot or didn't know to add the two stroke oil with it um, and the damage you saw that's what happens if you forget to put the oil in uh, quite a bit of work to strip it down um, it took a little while but the part was only 18 pounds so it was a cheap fix and yeah I'm really happy with that um, it's um, sort of spot on really so uh, I'll probably sell this on I don't really need it I've got one anyway exactly the same uh, but I would imagine someone will be really happy to own this saw. So I'm going to leave the video there. I hope you've enjoyed the video of sorting this saw out. And I'll be along with another video again soon. So bye for now.